Hey everybody, what's up? It's Christina and welcome back to another lesson here with English with Christina, where we talk about English grammar, fluency, vocabulary, and your basic tips and tricks. So if you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. Today's video is going to be taken from a Facebook Live session that I did today. I usually have Facebook Lives every Sunday, so if you are not there, then you should definitely go be there. But today's Facebook Live was about three questions in particular. The first one was about the difference between the words after and later. What's the difference between these two words? When do we use them? Etc. The second question for today was about modals in the continuous form. For example, could be doing, when do we use it, what does it all mean, let's get rid of some of the confusion about that. And then the third question for today was the difference between affirmative and negative sentences. I will switch over to that video very shortly. If you have any questions for me, then as always feel free to leave them in the comments below. Other than that, enjoy the video. Hey, what's up? It's Christina and welcome back to another Sunday Facebook Live Q&A session here on Facebook. Let's get right into it. We're going to start talking first about, I think actually we'll talk about after versus later first. Then we'll talk about modal continuous. So somebody asked, what's the difference between after and later? So. If you are a native Spanish speaker, then I can tell you after, you probably already know this, is después, and later is más tarde in Spanish. However, that doesn't really help you if you're not a native Spanish speaker, so let's talk about what it means. So after has two implications. It could be something that's related to time, but it doesn't have to be. It could be something that's related to something different than time, something other than time. So for example, if we say um, it's after five o'clock, then this is obviously related to time. It could be 5.05, it could be 5.15, or it could be 5.30, sometime after five o'clock. So that's related to time. But if I say B comes after A in the English alphabet, that's not related to time, that's just related to sequence. And that sequence, the alphabet, doesn't really have anything to do with time. So after could or could not be, it might or might not be related to time, depending on the context of the sentence. The word later is always going to be related to time. So we have here, let me give you a couple sentences. Later always implies time. So if I say two o'clock p.m. is later than 1 p.m. Okay, this is obviously related to time. It, I could also say that two o'clock comes after one o'clock. So here is where after could be related to time. Later is always going to be related to time. Another sentence that we could say is, I went to her house later in the day. So this means obviously it wasn't the beginning of the day when you went. It was maybe either the middle or late in the day, but later in the day, probably in the afternoon sometime. It went later in the day or even in the early evening. Again, that's something that's related to time. We don't have a specific point in time. It doesn't mean, oh, this was at five o'clock or this was at four o'clock. We just know that it wasn't at the beginning of the day, if that makes sense. Okay, and so the next sentence that we have as an example is, I came home from work and went to the gym an hour later. So this is also obviously related to time. And here we have a specific reference to time where we say it's one hour later. So I came home from work, let's say maybe it was five o'clock when you came home from work and you went to the gym an hour later. So let's say maybe it was six o'clock. Okay, so we have an idea. We don't know the exact time because it's not referencing it in the sentence, but we know that it's related to time. Now, we can also use the same sentence with the word after, but with a little bit of a tweak. So here we could say, I came home from work and went to the gym after that. So often when we're using the word after, when it's related to time, we're going to say after that or after a specific event 
that we have already referenced in the sentence. And so the word that is going to reference that specific event. Okay, if we don't say that, if we just say, I went to the gym an hour after, we can't say that. We could say, I went to the gym an hour later. That way we could say it. So a lot of the time after that is going to be used in place of the word later or vice versa. Later might be used in place of after that. Okay, so in summary, after is um, either related to time or not, it might not be related to time. And later is always going to be related to time. And I was just looking at Khalil's question here, wishing to explain the pronunciation of later too. Sure, so Khalil, I will give you the American English pronunciation because I am American. British English is a little bit different, but the American pronunciation of this word is later, later. So you'll notice that the T sounds more like a flat T or a very soft D, like d, 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 rather than t, t, t. Later, der, der. And then of course we have the strong American R where our lips are kind of flaring out, er, er, er. And our tongue gets big in our mouth and the sides of our tongue are going to be touching the sides of our teeth, of our upper teeth. Okay, so later. Later, later. Again, this is the American English pronunciation. It is a flat T. Most Americans do not say later. Very, very rare for an American to say later and pronounce that T as a true T. Okay, it does happen sometimes, but it's just not often. Okay, so now we are going to, let's see, I'm looking through the comments and to see if I'm looking at your question right now about the difference between neither or either. I actually have a video on my YouTube channel about that. So if you go to YouTube and look at the difference between neither and either for English with Christina, Christina with a K, then you will find that there. I would pull up the link, but I don't have it right here for you. I can post it later here on this video. All right, so that's after and later. Next one is modal continuous that we are going to talk about. Modal continuous. Who knows what modal verbs are? For those of you who don't know what modal verbs are, modal verbs are words like can, could, might, may, must, would. Let's see, I actually have a list here because I can't remember all of them at once. Should is another good one, and I'll give you those, that list. So these are modal verbs. Like if we say, I can go tomorrow or could you do this for me, or he might not be there. Those are all examples of sentences with modal verbs. So when we have it in the continuous, somebody has asked me this now twice, so I definitely want to answer the question of could be, could be plus the verb in its ing form. What does this mean? How do we use it? Um, what is the difference between could be plus the verb in the ing form and just could be and then the verb? So the modal continuous is basically it's used when you're not sure if the subject is doing something at that point in time or maybe in the future, but it's probably it's either likely or necessary or at least a possibility. And again, it's continuous. So those of you who know continuous, continuous means in that moment. Or if you're referencing a specific moment in the future, during that moment in the future. Or during this moment right now in the present. Again, depending on what you're trying to say. So let me give you some example sentences. I have right here, I could say, that steak you're eating could be doing more harm than good. That steak you're eating could be doing more harm than good. So here we have could be plus the verb in the ing form. Now, I'm not going to say, well, I could say that steak you're eating could do more harm than good, but this sounds like maybe you eat a steak later and then at that point in time, it does more harm than good. Could be doing in this moment or gradually, but in the very, very present tense, okay, in this present moment. It could be doing more harm than good. So 
that steak you're eating could be doing more harm than good, meaning that it's possible or that it's probable that it is doing more harm than actually helping you, okay? Then we have another example right here with a different modal verb saying should. So I should be studying right now. I should be studying right now. How is this different from I should study? So if we have I should study, that's the simple present tense with a modal verb versus I should be studying right now or I should be studying even without right now. That implies that in this present moment, right now, I should be studying versus I should study. I should study when? We don't know. There is no point of time to use as a reference. I should study later tonight. I should study tomorrow. I should study next week. I should study next month. We don't know, but I should be studying. Let's say, for example, if you are playing video games or you're hanging out with your friends or whatever it is that you're doing, and then you think to yourself, oh, I have this exam tomorrow, I really should be studying, meaning I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Instead, let me go home or let me you know, turn off the TV or whatever it is, and I'm going to start studying right now. So that's another example of modal continuous. All right, another one is he could be working right now. Okay, if you say, hey, have you seen John? Why isn't he at home? Well, he could be working, meaning that it's possible that he's working right now. Okay, it's just another way of saying it's possible that he's working. Americans don't really tend to say a whole lot. We do sometimes, but it's not very, very common for us to say it's possible that he's working we would be more likely to say, well, he could be working or he might be working, okay? So, or he might be at work right now. It means the same thing. He might be working right now. So this is another example of a modal verb with the continuous verb tense, okay? And then I've got one more. So if we have, let's go somewhere else, someone could be listening to our conversation. And we could say, or we don't have to say, but we could say right now, put that in parentheses to reference that it's a possibility. You can say that in the sentence, but you don't have to. Let's go somewhere else. Someone could be listening right now. So let's say, for example, if you're in a cafe and you're having a coffee with a friend and you start having a really private conversation with your friend, but you feel like other people are starting to listen, listen in on your conversation and they are listening to you, and you don't like that. So then you say, okay, let's, let's go somewhere else. Let's go to your house or let's go to my house or let's go wherever where I don't feel like people are listening to us because someone could be listening to us. It's possible that they are listening to us. Or you could also say they might be listening to us right now. So again, another example with the modal continuous. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, it's used when you're not sure if the subject of this sentence is currently doing something, but it's either necessary or it's likely or it's probable, okay? If you need more examples, I can give you more examples of those too. So that's, now we've got after versus later. We've got the modal continuous. And then one more topic that I'm going to cover is affirmative versus negative sentences. Affirmative versus negative sentences. This is very easy, it's very simple. Basically, affirmative means positive, and negative, well, means negative. So, if we have a sentence like, there we go, if we have a sentence like, I'm here, I am here. Is this affirmative or negative? It's affirmative because it's positive. If I say I'm not here, then this is a negative sentence. Okay, if somebody calls and says, hey, are, are you here at this party? No, I'm not here or I'm not there. I'm not there, then that's a negative sentence. I'm not there yet. Let's see if I can spell. I'm not there yet. Negative sentence, okay? So affirmative is basically you're expressing the truth or the validity of a statement or of a sentence, and some people might say that you're confirming it. If you've ever seen some of those cop shows or shows or movies in the military when they're talking to each other on the walkie-talkies, 
and they ask them a question, you know, did this happen or I'm going this way and this and that, is, um, is this right? And they say, they come back on the walkie talkie and they say affirmative, affirmative, they're confirming, yes. If they say negative, negative, no, that's not right. Or I don't agree, or I'm not going to do this. But it's something that is, they're going against what you're saying. Okay, so another example would be, um, I can understand you, or I can understand. That's affirmative, okay? If we say, I can't understand, then that's negative. By the way, if you guys want a really good video on the difference between can and can't in pronunciation, then I just uploaded one to my YouTube channel as well. And I'm gonna take a time out for a side note for a minute. I'm also going to be uploading this video to YouTube as well so that I can give you some English captions, some English subtitles and some Spanish subtitles to it as well. So if you are not catching every single thing that I'm saying right now, then this will be uploaded to YouTube later, probably within a couple of days with English and Spanish subtitles. So definitely feel free to go over there and check that out. I'm going to try to do that regularly with my Facebook lives from now on that we're going to have here on Sundays. Okay, so you guys, I think that about covers it for today. We talked about after versus later. We talked about modal continuous and we talked about affirmative versus negative sentences. Now I know that that doesn't address everybody's questions, but again, please feel free to comment below if there's another question that you have, or also stay tuned to both my Facebook and my YouTube pages if you want to see more content because I may be answering your question later on in another Facebook or a YouTube video. Okay, so definitely feel free to check that out. And other than that, I hope that this session today has been helpful for you. If you have any other comments or anything that you'd like to add to it, feel free to add it below. Feel free to share it if this has been helpful and you think it would help somebody else as well. Other than that, I will be seeing you guys in my next video. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the weekend and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye guys. All right, everybody, so that is going to conclude today's lesson on the difference between after and later, modals in the continuous form, as well as the difference between affirmative and negative sentences. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was and you enjoyed it, then go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and share it with somebody you know. You can subscribe to my channel right here. The last video is right here. Other than that, I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day, and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Mwah.